Uh, hello, this is a follow-up with some more data from our project of watching uh, Hurricane Dorian pass by some buoy cams. That's a, uh, b that's a, a bu ocean sea, going b sea buoys with, uh, with camcorders. And uh, this is an article we have about it that tells how to do it and set this up. And in fact, at the end of this article, there's three fun functions. You, you can just drag onto Google Earth and it'll set up your own program for that. And then there's instructions here to do it. And here's what it ends up looking like, this kind of picture here. Um, whoa, just a minute, I just want to show that. Where, and this was quite a few days ago, back when the storm, before the storm even got to the Bahamas, right here. But it was like this. Uh, it looks like it missed Alabama, it turns out. But anyway, curves around over here. And then uh, here we see these days ago that um, it was headed for this buoy, 41004 plus this one and this one. And so that was some days ago that we knew that. And we had this set up to watch that and how you get the buoys and so forth. And frankly, we've been watching that and hadn't, you know, we could see the storm and big waves and so forth, but we didn't see anything particularly interesting yet until today. And uh, that's what I want to show. So let me pull this aside. And wait, that's the data I really want to show. But let's go to back to Google Earth. This is our setup. And it's still active and working. But we're past. Here's the buoy we're talking about right here. And if you click this right now, it's dark and there's nothing there. But we're looking about what happened this morning. And so, and there's the track from our setup, and you can see how that works. Now, if I go up here, let me turn on a couple things. The accumulated track um, here. Okay, so that's a way to go back and get the track as it approached here. And here's our buoy we care about. Then I think I drew a line. Um, a track there and then an outline okay let me just show you this for a minute this is advisory 49 they, they're numbered uh, at the National Hurricane Center this advisory 49 which is the time we're talking about here and it says which is um, uh, what is the date here uh, does it repeat it uh, 9 5 well this is this is 12 Z at 9 5 uh, it doesn't really say September here anywhere, but um, um, so it says the Hurricane Center is located at this position, um, and it's moving in direction 020 at uh, 7 knots. Now, we look at this, we actually get 7.5. I'll show you that. The minimum pressure is 958. We agree with that. We can read all this right from the buoy tracks. And then here's the point I'm after. The diameter of the eye is 40 nautical miles. Here's what the punchline is. We're going to be able to see that buoy pictures inside the eye of the storm, which is kind of neat. There, and brings up some interesting questions about sea state to think about. Anyway, so there's that. So here's this. Now, what I can do, let me see. I have the satellite image. Okay, now let me zoom out here, you see. That's the satellite image at the right time. And here's the right time, 1500 Zulu. So there's the right time. I just, I just have to confirm, multiply confirm, that we are looking at what we think we're looking at. So sure enough, that storm, here's the center of the storm, and that's the width of the eye. And that eye, uh, let's see, outline the eye. See, that's 40 nautical miles across here. Remember here, it says the diameter is 40 nautical miles. This is 40 nautical miles. So that's what it looks like. And um, so this is like how far the storm went, 12 o'clock to 18, that's six hours. And six hours it went, uh, let's see, uh, wait a minute, that's the wrong one, cancel. Well, this I think was 44 miles. The distance from here to here is 44 miles, and that makes it 7.5 knots. So that's the that's the condition. So sure enough, this so and look, this is 12 o'clock, and we're going to see the pictures from this buoy that um, that as this guy went by, and that we have compiled. Um, that we have compiled in a way that we can look at. Let me, we have, I have to show one other thing first here. Um, 
let me come back over here and go to the buoy station itself. So I'm at, I'm at the National Data Buoy Center buoy page. And if you go to the buoy page, you've got this picture here, combined plot of wind and sea. Okay, this is what we have used to know when things were where, uh, when the storm was where. Now we have to blow this up a little bit, but you see this is 12Z today, 12Z, you go straight up this line. Now that's the pressure. Look, the pressure is way down and the wind is way up. So actually the peak of the pressure at this buoy location, the peak of the wind speed happened at about 12 o'clock. And then, then it just plummeted as the eye went by down to, what's that? This is meters per second. You have to multiply this number by two to get knots, roughly. So that's 10 knots, five knots, not zero, but you know, five to 10 knots. And then over here, each of these is um, three hours, three hours. And so that's three hours later, um, Okay, then here goes the wind back out. So this is the region where we're looking at the storm in the buoy pictures. Uh, okay, so now here is the here is the punchline that we've accumulated here, and here is this picture. Here is here is this picture zoomed in somewhat, and. Um, Let's see, I've got this, I can blow this up. Now, this is at 12, 12 Zulu, and we know from that picture, that this picture here, that that's when the winds were peak winds. And, okay, so here's what happened. I discovered this effect sometime about here, 18 Zulu today. So that would be like 11 or 12, 11 o'clock Seattle time. That's when I first, I should have, I mean, it's silly. I set this thing up, and then I failed to look at it this morning. But anyway, we looked at 11 o'clock. And 11 o'clock, we're lucky we can get archives of these. They, they don't advertise how to get archives of these pictures. But we have an article online in, the, in that article list that shows how you can go back and get these pictures. But you can only go back about six or seven pictures. And so this is the farthest back I could go, which luckily is all we need, which what we needed here wasn't particularly good only two of the six cameras looks like they're working and then the next hour looks like I mean it, something's there but we can't see much but what we do see is this huge winds and huge storm waves here so that coincides with this now it looks like here then it's still we can't see too much it does look like this kind of in the darkness you know in the I don't know why the camera doesn't work. But then some the eye is coming in sometime around here, 14, 15, 16. 14, 15, 16. And look here in particular, okay, 14. So here, come down to this picture. And I'll put this PDF, I'll put a link to this PDF so everybody can download it and study it and think about this uh, on your own with a, with a, see, these will zoom way in. See, you can zoom way in these once you get the PDF. And so, but what we did here, we marked these three hours off, and it looks to us like the I was between 14, 15, and 16, and then 17, this over here, remember that's 12, then 15, 16, 17. See, 17, you're back up to getting uh, some, some strong winds. 15, you, you just plot the PDF, then you can draw the lines. But, so here then, now let me zoom in, let me zoom in, and look at this, you see there's a lot of birds in there. And remember, these are 360 degrees, every 60 degrees, but there's birds in every picture. So those poor birds, uh, uh, I don't know, they're spinning around there. But an hour later, then the wall of that wind comes in, and we see it right here between 16 and 1700. That wall of wind and all the haze and blowing rain and everything. See these streaks? That means wind above 30. But that that wind came in. These. Um, let's see. What was that wind speed? Um, let me go back here. I'm going to go back to the picture of the. Um, oh, it's over here. Hang on. Uh, here is this. Now, what's that wind speed peaking 30? Now, but multiply by 2. See, it, it wasn't 
Actually, it wasn't that strong. It was above a hurricane. Hurricane 64 knots on this system. And this thing was about like uh, 64. You know, so it was right, you know, right category one or two. I don't know how they num number those. But it looks like the wind, the sustained winds were about like um, 34, uh, almost 70 knots. Gusts, gusts up to 90. Okay. And that all came in from this sort of almost, you know, the birds, uh, birds out there flying around. It all came in in a wallop here, in a wall, came in within the hour, and it looked like this. Now, we don't see yet really huge waves. You can see that it's obviously really nasty conditions and strong winds blowing, but there's still relatively low waves. When the waves get real big, we've seen this before, these cameras tilt over and you see these pictures looking like this, but you do see obviously that the wall of the, the, wall of the strong winds hit here at, uh, what time is this one? At 1710. And if you go on here, 15, 16, 17, and you draw that line, um, well, we drew the one to 18, which is right up here, but this would be 17 right here. Okay, so that's what we're showing. We can think about this. The other concept that's interesting, and I don't know how it applies, but there is a concept in oceanography called trapped fetch, and I'm not sure it applies anywhere near the center of a hurricane. It could apply along the edge, but anyway, we have to think about that. But now we have real pictures, and you see how your life could change from sitting there watching the birds fly around at in uh, five to 10 knots of wind, and a half hour later, you're in uh, 90 knots with a nasty situation. And we see real pictures of this for the first time, at least our first time here. And of course, this is a way to see these, not out there in your boat.